Good morning, sixth grade. It's Thursday, January 21st. Let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. May I be at peace. May my heart remain open. May I be aware of my true nature. May I be healed. May I be a source of healing to others. May I dwell in the breath of God. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, please um, pause the video, solve these two warm up problems, and then come on back and we will get going on today's lesson. Okay, so our two warm up problems today involve adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Um, I want to, before we even solve these problems, I want to just reassure you that you're going to, we're going to practice adding and subtracting um, just fractions and mixed numbers with all the different signs and all those different little details involved throughout this whole unit. Okay, we are moving on today. We're gonna to move on to multiplication today. And I know that some of you are probably a little bit panicked that you're still struggling with adding and subtracting, and that's okay. Um, adding and subtracting is actually harder than multiplying and dividing fractions, okay? So hopefully that is a little bit of a sigh of relief. It's like, okay, hopefully today is not gonna be so hard. But at the same time, I do want you to continue to practice this adding and subtracting. And so we're going to see it in our warm ups a lot for the rest of this unit. And the goal is that between these warm ups and my explanations of the warm ups and the time that you spend with your tutors, and I know your tutors are going to be reinforcing adding and subtracting with you as well as we get work throughout this entire unit you're gonna feel more comfortable and more solid on those skills when we get to the end of the unit, okay? So um, the bottom line is I want you to keep working hard, but I also don't want you to get too panicked or discouraged if it's still hard, okay? Because like I said, adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers is hard, okay? But you can do hard things. You've been showing it to me all year. I know you can do it. All right. Let's go ahead and solve, um, solve this problem. So um, I'm adding six and one eighteenth plus five and one ninth. And remember the first step is I should do a little bit of an estimate. Let's make sure that I have an idea of what my answer should be kind of close to. Well, the first number is pretty close to six plus something pretty close to five. So it's gonna be about six plus five or about, oh, not 10, six plus five is 11 about 11. Okay, so my answer should be somewhere around 11. And I'll just check that at the end to make sure it is. Now, if I'm going to add these two mixed numbers, I have to have a common denominator. My common denominator between 9 and 18 is 18. So I need to multiply 1 9th by 2 over 2. So I get that common denominator of 18. So I have 6 and 1 18th plus 5 and 2 18ths. Now I'm going to add the fraction parts together. 1 18th plus 2 18 is 3 18 and 6 plus 5 is 11. So my answer is 11 and 3 18 Okay. Let's do another one or let's look at number two. Number two is a little bit harder because it's got some positive and negative numbers in it. So negative 4 and 13 fifteenths minus a negative two and three fifths. Okay, remember the first thing I said yesterday is when you're subtracting a negative number, let's turn that into an addition problem. So instead of subtracting a negative two and three fifths, this is negative four and 13 fifteenths plus two and three fifths. So I'm not subtracting a negative, I'm adding a positive. Now let's get our common denominator. Common denominator between 5 and 15 is 15. So this first number is going to stay the same. So negative 4 and 13 fifteenths. But this one I have to multiply by 3 on the top and bottom. 2 and 9 fifteenths. Okay. Now let's add our fraction parts together. So we have to be careful here because this whole first number here is negative, which means this is negative 13 fifteenths plus positive 9 fifteenths because 2 and 9 fifteenths was positive. Negative 13 plus 9 is negative 4. So I've got negative 4 fifteenths, and then I need to add my integer parts together. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 
And so my answer is negative two and four fifteenths. Okay, oh, but I didn't estimate on this one. Um, if I go back up to the top and think about it, my answer is probably close to negative, it's probably close to negative five plus, I'm gonna say it's close to two, two. negative five plus two is negative three. Negative two and four fifteenths is, it's reasonably close to negative three, okay? All right, so that was our warm up. Now let's talk about today's objective. Okay, so um, like I said at the very beginning, we're, you know, we're still, again, thinking about the parts of the fraction and how that impacts its value and how the different operations, you know, as we're doing addition and subtraction and multiplying and dividing with fractions, how is that changing the value of the fraction? How is that impacting the fraction of the value? So I want you thinking about that as we're solving problems. Today, um, we are going to multiply fractions. So we're going to be multiplying positive fractions and negative fractions and positive times negative and negative times positive and negative times negative. The good news is when we multiply fractions, we follow the same rules for multiplication that we did with integers. Okay, so that's what's kind of cool about doing fractions, um, multiplication of fractions. So before we do that though, let me get my whiteboard up and we are gonna talk about what multiplication of fractions really means. Okay, now before we get into fractions themselves, I want to just talk about multiplication and we need to think about what multiplication is. Multiplication is repeated addition. Okay, and I'm going to write that down and then I'm going to explain it because that's kind of a that's kind of a little bit of an abstract concept there. So multiplication is repeated addition. So if I were to say two times three, what I'm saying here, if I wanna translate that into to words, is two groups of three. Two times three is two groups of three. And we know we've been doing multiplication facts for so long, we know two times three is six, but why is that? Well, two groups of three is three plus three, right? Which is six, two times three is six. Same thing if I were to say four times seven. Well, that is four times seven is four groups of seven. Four times seven, and again, we've been doing this for so long, you know, four times seven is 28 because you've been, you've been told you've got to memorize those and you do, you have to know your multiplication facts. And let me tell you, you really need to know this unit, okay? So four times three or four times seven is 28, but, but what really is that? Well, four groups of seven, it's saying I've got seven plus seven plus seven plus seven, four groups of seven. Well, if I add all those together, I get 28. Four times seven is 28 because of that. Now, Let's talk about fractions, because that's what we're, our unit is. It's the same idea for fractions, okay? And so if I said four times one half, okay? I'm oh, like, I don't know how to do that one yet. You're right, you don't. We're gonna learn how to do it right now. But that's, if I think about what it means, okay? And again, I wanna go back here before I even do that. Let's look at this problem and this problem. We don't ever write out the addition, right? We don't say two times three, oh, okay, three plus three is six, or four times seven, oh, seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. We don't, we don't write it out that way. I just showed you that because I want you to understand why, okay? Same thing with this fraction. We're not gonna add all these numbers together, okay? I just want to show you how it works and why it works, okay? Which is why I'm doing it this way. Four times one half is four groups of one half. Okay, that's one half plus one half plus one half plus one half, right? Four groups of one half. Well, what's one half plus one half plus one half one plus one half? Think about the pizzas. Half a pizza plus a half a pizza is a whole pizza plus another half plus another half. One half plus one half plus one half plus one half is two. It's four halves, right? One half, I add the numerators, which is two. 
okay? So now we think about um, how do we how do we model that? How do we do that? Look at this and look at this. Now remember, a whole number can be written as an improper fraction, right? A whole number. I can write four as four over one. It's saying I'm taking four pieces and I'm dividing them into one piece. Well, four holes divided into one holes is four, right? I'm taking four times one half. Can you see, if you look at that, can you see how similar is this to this? What if I multiply across the top? What's four times one? It's four. And then if I multiply across the bottom, what's one times two? It's two. And now look at that. And how do I, what happens when I reduce my fraction? What's four divided by two? It's two. So this is what we do when we multiply fractions, okay, to get the right answer. Now, I gave you, I tried to give you a visual of why it works. I'll be telling you right now, you don't have to remember that. What you do have to remember is this. When we multiply fractions, we multiply across the top, we multiply across the bottom, and we reduce our fraction, okay? Let's, um, let's look at another example. Um, and I'm gonna do a visual again, okay? Remember this rule, this rule, this rule matters. But let's do another visual because Sometimes, what, what about this? What if I said one half times one half? Well, now if I try to write those words out and say, well, one half of a group of one half. Okay, let's think about what that means. One half of a group, I'm gonna write that out. One half of a group of one half. Okay, so let's, I have a box here and I have half. What's one half of my half? If I take my half and divide it in half, and now I have one half of my half, what fraction of that box do I have? One half of my half is one fourth. I got that just from the picture, right? Now let's look at our rule for multiplication. Well, one half times one half. I said multiply across the top. Well, one times one is one. Multiply across the bottom. Two times two is four. Same thing. Okay, that's why the rule works. I wanted to show you the picture because I want you to understand or at least believe me, um, why that rule works. Okay, so let's look at some other examples. Let's look at two fifths times one half. So we could draw a picture, okay, and then and do all of that, but we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna draw a picture for every one of these. We're gonna remember the rule. And the rule is when we multiply fractions, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, Simplify your fraction. And now I'm also going to add this in here. We don't need it for this problem, but remember the rules.
for multiplying signed numbers. Okay. Okay, so let's do that one. What's two times one? I'm gonna multiply across the top. Two times one is two. Multiply across the bottom. Five times two is 10. And then I need to reduce my fraction. Two tenths can be re reduced if I divide by two on the top and bottom to one fifth. Okay. Let's do another one. Let's do negative five eighths times negative one fourth. Multiply across the top. Negative five times negative one is positive five. Multiply across the bottom. Eight times four is 32. Can I reduce this fraction? It's simple. It's done, simplified. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do negative four fifths times two thirds. Multiply across the top, negative four times two is negative eight. Multiply across the bottom, eight times, or not eight, three times, five times three is 15. Can I reduce eight over 15? Nope, done. Let's do another one. Let's do seven times three tenths. Ooh, this one's a little trickier. I can't multiply seven times three tenths the way it's written. Remember, I have to have both those numbers as fractions. How do I write seven as a fraction? Seven as a fraction is seven over one. You have to rewrite whole numbers as fractions. You have to, okay? And it's gonna be that number over one. Now we can multiply. Seven times three is 21. One times 10 is 10. Now I'm not done on this one. 21 over 10 is an improper fraction, so I need to turn this into a mixed number. So 10 goes into 21 two times with a remainder of one. Okay. Let's do one more. Actually, we got a couple more. Let's do negative eight times negative five sixteenths. Okay, I've got a whole number. I have to turn it into an improper fraction. So this is negative eight over one times negative five over 16. Multiply across the top. Negative eight times negative five is 40. One times 16 is 16. And now I have to reduce it. So 16 goes into 40 two times, right? 16 times two is 32. So two and eight sixteenths and eight sixteenths can reduce to two and one half. Okay. Now I want to look at, actually we're, we'll do a different one. Let's do this problem. Let's do, let's see what I've got here. Let's do um, 12 fifteenths times five sixths. Okay, so I'm gonna solve this problem two ways. I wanna show you two ways to solve it. The first way is exactly what we've been doing. So 12 times five is 60 and 15 times six is 90. And then I'm gonna reduce my fraction. So I know I can divide by 10. So this becomes six over nine and then I can divide by three. So this becomes two over three is my answer, okay. So there is a, there's another way to solve this and it's not really a different way, it's the same way, but we can do some shortcuts. So if I look at my problem again, 12 over 15 times five over six, I can cancel factors. I can simplify these fractions before I actually multiply everything together. So when, you're, when you cancel factors, okay, canceling factors, You can only go top to bottom and diagonal, okay? You can't, cannot cancel 
across horizontally. Okay, now I'm going to show you what that means. If I look at um, 5 and 15, okay, so this is diagonal, right? 5 to 15 would be diagonally. This would be across, this would be top to bottom, okay? Let me reset. I can cancel factors and I can say, well, five and 15 have a common factor of five. This becomes one and this becomes three. If I divide them both by five, and then I can do the same thing with the 12 and the six. I look at those and say, oh, well, they've got common factors too. Six, if I divide by six is one, 12 if I divide by six is two. And now when I multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom, I get two times one is two and three times one is three, okay? Which is the same answer. The benefit of doing it that way is that you don't end up with such big numbers. See, I ended up with 60 over 90 and then I had to reduce that down to two thirds, which is fine and you can do it that way. And if you're like, Mrs. Rottinghouse, this is too much. I don't wanna have to cancel factors. Don't have to cancel factors but start thinking about it because it does make the numbers smaller. It makes your multiplication smaller. Okay, let's do one more of those just so I can show you again what it, what it means. What if I did, um, let's do 21 over 48 times, uh, let's do, six over seven, okay. Now, I can multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Look at how big those numbers are gonna be. I've got 21 times six, which I have to do off to the side. I don't even know what that is. Six, 126 over, and then I've got 48 times seven, six, five, 28, 30, 336. Okay, so, and then I have to reduce that fraction. And that's a really hard fraction to reduce because those are numbers I'm not familiar with. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna say, you know what? I wanna cancel factors. Let's go back and look now at the original problem. 21 over 48 times six over seven. And let's see if I can, if I can cancel any factors before I start. And I look at this and I say, okay, 21 and seven. Seven is a factor of 21. Seven, if I divide by seven, I get one. And if I divide by seven, I get three. 21 divided by seven is three. So I've made those numbers really a lot smaller. And let's do the same thing with 48 and six. Look at those and they do, ha they have a common factor too. Six is a factor of 48. So if I divide by six, I get one. If I divide by six, I get eight. Three times one is three. Eight times one is eight, three eighths. If I reduce this fraction, I'll get three eighths, but it's gonna take a lot of work. I have to figure out the common factors and then I have to divide really big numbers. So, and you can, you can do that. But like I said, if you wanna start trying to cancel factors when you've got big numbers, it will make the problem easier, okay? So start thinking about that. Even if you don't do it on today's homework, even if you're like, no, Mrs. Ridinghouse, I just, I'm gonna multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, reduce, that's fine but start thinking about how you can make that problem smaller by canceling factors, okay? All right, one more thing I wanna show you because you are gonna see this in your homework. So when you see multiplication or the word, so multiplication in math, or I shouldn't say that, I should say the word of, when you see the word of in math, it typically means multiplication, okay? So if you see a problem that says, find three-fifths of 70, that means multiplication. Three-fifths of 70 means three-fifths times 70. And let's solve it. Well, 70, remember, is a whole number, so I have to write it as a fraction. I have to write this as three-fifths times 
not three thirds, three fifths times 70 over one and then solve it. So I can, let's just multiply across top, multiply across the bottom. Three times 70 is 210, five times one is five, but now I have to reduce it, right? So five, how many times does five go into um, 210? So four is 20 and two. So it goes in 42 times, okay? Let's do one more. Let's do find one fourth of five. One fourth of five is one fourth times five, which is one fourth times five over one. Five times one is five, four times one is four. And that, if I simplify that becomes one and one fourth, okay? All right, so there is your first lesson on multiplication. We are gonna do more. Next week, we'll be doing some more multiplication, especially with mixed numbers. Um, key points today is remember to multiply fractions. You multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Remember the rules for signs. So if you're multiplying negative times a negative, you get a positive. Negative times a positive, you get a negative. Those same rules apply. Um, and if you wanna try starting to cancel factors rather than doing straight multiplication and simplifying, try it, okay? Try it out and see if you can um, get more comfortable with that because I promise it will make things easier later on. All right, let's talk about your homework. Okay, so your homework assignment is worksheet 5-8. Um, I want you to do two through 20 even, and then I also want you to do 30, 32, 42, 44, and 48, okay? Um, so make sure you write that down so you know which problems you're supposed to do. You do have a quiz this week. I know you have homework and a quiz. Sometimes it's going to work out that way. Um, your quiz is only five questions this week. Um, you've got a couple of simplifying. Um, you've got um, comparing. You've got a couple of addition and subtraction. And you've got a multiplication problem. So it's um, just a little bit of everything that we've been doing this unit so far. Um, Take your time with it. Talk with your tutor before you take the quiz and make sure you're feeling okay or, you know, as you're making progress on um, all of these concepts. I know fractions are tough, but I promise you the more you work with them, the easier they get. And I also promise you that later on in math, when you get into high school level math, fractions are your friends. You're going to want to, you're going to want to use fractions. And so take the time now to get used to them. Get out of the denial that you hate fractions. We all are gonna love fractions by the end of this, okay? I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you back here next week. Let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.